Marty? Marty, you there? Marty? Marty? Marty, you in here? Marty? 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 <laughs> hey, there you are. What's wrong? What's going on, Marty? Bored. Do you, do you want to play something, maybe? What about Super Nintendo? Not so stupid. Okay, uh, what about, what about Farkle? Go Farkle yourself. Marty, language. Okay, um, PlayStation 3. Three times and it's still terrible. You like the PlayStation 3. I like the 2 better. Okay, um, you like that game Sushi Go? You want to play Sushi Go? Sushi Go away. Okay, uh, what about the little animals? You want to play with the little animals? The jungle out there. I don't want a jungle in here. Uh, Sega Saturn? Sega Saturn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to play Sega Saturn? <laughs> no way. Okay. Wayne. I got it. I got it. Hold on one second. Whatever. Okay, Marty, how about this? PlayStation VR. We. We got this like last week. Yeah. Well, why not? We would, we've been talking about this for over a week now. I don't, I don't want to play, okay? Why? What's going on? It's, it's just that it's not comfortable on my snout. It's made for short snouted people like you. Pretty. I have a long snout. You have a beautiful snout and it's going to fit fine. I can I can just hold it. What, my snout? No, look, let, let me show you. Oh, Your snout's beautiful, and it's gonna fit fine on the PlayStation VR. You promise? I promise. Now, how about we play some games? Okay, Dad, let's try! Alright, let's do it. Okay. Okay, Marty. Yeah. I uh -huh. am going to play the first game uh -oh. and see how it goes, and then you can play the next one, okay? Okay, okay, Dad. Alright, let's do this. Okay. Shooty Fruity is a packing game, quick to learn, hard to master, addictive, and an overall blast to play. You are basically a cashier at a grocery store, and you have certain goals you have to complete depending on the mission you select. As you scan items, fruit begin to attack you from different parts of the grocery store. Above your head at the checkout is a conveyor belt of guns which you use to defeat the fruit and protect your station. There are a wide variety of fruit each with their own unique attacks and hell-bent on destroying your station and making you unemployed. I was never afraid of fruit, but after the strawberries and pineapples in Fruity Fruity, things have changed. They are just mean fruits. The game starts in the main menu, or break room, where you select a mission you want to play, as well as the gun loadout you will have. You select a mission like a clock and punch card. On the back of the card there are certain challenges. Complete the challenges and you earn stars which unlocks more missions and power-ups for your weapons. In an actual mission, you need to scan groceries to get better guns for your loadout to become available on the conveyor belt, but you need to stop scanning in order to shoot the fruit. In the beginning missions, it's easy to both scan and shoot at the same time, but later missions make that almost impossible. It becomes a constant back and forth. Shooty Fruity goes from zero to frantic pretty quickly, but I have to say, I am a scanning beast. Sometimes I'm not even looking at the groceries. I'm just scanning blindly while popping cherries left and right. The only negative I would say with this game is using grenades. I find it really difficult to accurately throw them. I'll either just throw them straight to the ground or overthrow them by a mile. I've had trouble throwing items in every VR game so far, so it seems to be an issue with either me or the tech itself and not the game. 
I would like to thank all grocery stores that have replaced their cashiers with self-checkouts while keeping their prices the same or raising them. I always thought they were just making me act as both employee and customer while not paying me, but really, they were just training me for shooty fruity. Overall, great game and should be a day one purchase. Yeah, that was pretty intense, Morty. Oh. <sighs> All right. My turn yet? Yeah, it's your turn. Let's let's pick a game. What about Shooty Fruity? Huh? Well, no, you're not gonna play Shooty Fruity. Why? You're gonna play something else. Cause we already did Shooty Fruity. Oh. Well, okay. What do I play? I don't know. Let's take a look. Come on, let's take a look. Okay. Okay. I think I... we should do. I think we should do Doom. No. Doom. No. Yeah. No. 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 We should. I don't want to do. Doomed if you play Doom. <laughs> Morty, is it gonna give you nightmares? Uh, is it scary? Yeah, it's kind of scary. Maybe. Okay. Well, I want to play something nice and happy, like Shooty Fruity. No, we already did Shooty Fruity. Let me let me do this one again. I know I'm taking your turn. You'll do the um, next turn. And then it'll be my turn. Yeah, then it'll be your turn. Um. What do I just watch? No, no, you could. I mean, you shouldn't watch because you're gonna get nightmares. Oh, yeah. how about this? Well, you play I'll bone. I'm boning, and I'll bone in here, and then I'll go in the bedroom nope. and bone, and then we'll no, 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 no. we can bone later. No, 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 you're not but, boning, you're chewing on a bone. But, but then what's boning? Uh. Doom VFR is more of a collection of challenge room segments than a fully fledged game. There is some map navigation, but not at the same level as the 2016 game. That is not to say the game is bad, because it is definitely not. Doom VFR is one hell of an experience. Blasting demons in VR has never been more fun. One of the things that's apparent from the beginning is the scale of the demons. They all look so much bigger than they do in the regular 2D game. When a Hell Knight comes running towards you for the first time, you will be shaking in your Doom Guy boots. Same with the Kaka Demon. Those balls are big. And I don't even have any. I wondered if the game mechanics were going to be changed significantly to compensate for any difficulties that could come from the transition to VR, but really nothing has changed. It is still the same frantic dodging and shooting you are used to. Now Doom VFR is different from the 2016 game in a few ways. First your right arm holds your main weapon, while your left arm now holds a grenade launcher. The launcher kind of acts as a way to lessen the difficulty when things get hectic. When demons start to surround you, you can fire the launcher and instantly kill everything. I never really use the launcher, but I think it would be helpful when you're using the control style without free movement. There's also no longer a jump button. All jumping is delegated to the jump pads within the levels. And the jump pads were some of the few instances where I felt motion in my stomach, but it, really it wasn't too bad. Flying through the air while firing rockets in VR makes you feel like such a badass. Your experience with Doom VFR is highly dependent on the control scheme that you choose you have three options for controlling Doom Guy. The first option is using the DualShock controller to move your character while your head is locked to the targeting reticle, allowing you to look and aim. This is the same as the default controls for Resident Evil 7 and probably the easiest way to play the game. Being able to freely move while also having the ability to use the other control scheme features such as teleport movement and 180 degree turn makes the game infinitely easier. I was able to beat the game on one of the hardest difficulties with only dying once. Dodging enemies with free movement and teleporting while having perfect aiming since your reticle is tied to your head makes you unstoppable. The second control option has you using two move controllers to control each hand while your head is not tied to the reticle and allows for free look. There is no free movement with this control style, there is only teleportation, so you become very dependent on using the 180 degree turn. This control scheme also allows you to do single forward and back and strafe movements using the face buttons on the move controller. It's a little difficult at first because of the placement on the buttons on the move controller, but you get used to it. I think this option is more fun than using the DualShock, but it artificially increases the difficulty due to the limitation of movement. The third control style uses the PlayStation Aim controller. You have free movement, but your targeting reticle is not tied to your head. I don't have an aim controller, 
but I would suspect that this is probably the best way to play. It kind of offers the best of the other two control schemes. In terms of gameplay, the only fault I have with the game is the segments in between levels. They usually consist of fetching an item or flicking a switch. They are there to progress the story, but I thought there could have been more to those parts. So Doom VFR is another must buy. The game is pretty short, but it was so much fun that I ended up playing through the campaign three times. If you have a PSVR, get this game. Oh, wow, Marty. I'm glad you didn't play Doom. It is actually kind of scary. All right, time for the next one. What do you want to play? Marty, what do you want to play? You'd rather chew on your bone. You you don't want to do it now? You don't want to play? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the bone. <laughs> Alright. Alright, you, you 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 chew on the bone. I'm gonna play uh, I'm gonna play white bed, okay? Bone's okay. fun! My oh man. I was not ready for wipeout VR. I've been playing video games for over 20 years and few things have made me react like this game. The adrenaline rush you get from experiencing Wipeout VR is not like anything I've ever played. It's probably the closest thing to piloting a prod racer in Star Wars. When I began writing reviews for this video, I was sure that Wipeout wasn't going to be my favorite, but I was wrong. This game is amazing. I can't explain the difference between using the VR headset yourself and seeing the footage, but you have to try it. I guess it's really the difference between watching a video of someone in a race car and driving one yourself. One of the things I've always found in racing games is that no matter how hard developers try, they can't recreate that sense of speed you have driving something in real life. And in my opinion, virtual reality kind of changes that. As soon as I finished recording the footage for Wipeout, I had to go to the fridge, get a beer, and just sit on a couch for a while and cool down. Maybe I'm easily entertained, I mean I know I am, but this game is just so fantastic. The game has your typical campaign, three different classes and a bunch of races to complete in each class. There are regular races, time attack, and point based matches which are almost kind of like battle mode. Each one having a target goal to achieve, and meeting those goals earns you new ships. The graphics in Wipeout are incredible too. It doesn't seem to suffer from the same amount of blurriness as the other games I've played so far. I mean I do wish though that the PSVR had a higher resolution overall, but it looks really good on Wipeout. I hope in the future Sony releases a PSVR 2 for PlayStation 5 that has a higher resolution like the 2880 x 1600 resolution of the HTC Vive Pro and they make it backwards compatible with PS4 games. The sound in the game is great too. Playing this in VR kind of brought back memories of playing Cruising USA and Rush Extreme Racing in the arcades. With Rush back in the day you would get in that cockpit and you had those speakers that enveloped you and the volume was set way too high and it just put you in the zone. And Wipeout is kind of the same way. I'm not the biggest fan of techno dubstep music, but it just works here. There was one instance where I was in third place and got a turbo power up right at the end of the race. As soon as I hit the turbo, the music came out of a breakdown and hit this hard hitting beat. And it just made me yell out, Let's do this, bitch! And if a game can get me to say something that stupid, then it's an A in my book. Gameplay itself is great too. The most important part of a racing game for me is the controls, and this thing controlled great for me. Every bump and smack into the wall felt like it was my fault, and not clunky, overly difficult controls. Now, it's definitely not going to control like a simulator such as Gran Turismo, Forza, Project Cars, etc., but I mean, why would it? It's arcade controls through and through, and it feels good. I haven't tried this game without VR yet, so it may feel more like a typical racer without it, but I've always enjoyed Wipeout games, so I don't doubt that this one is just as good without VR. Wipeout is another must play for PSVR. The game's fun to play and gives you an experience that cannot be achieved playing on a TV. Marty, I am wiped out. 
Oh man. Okay. All right. Enough. Enough with the with the boning. Oh. Boning's no, not boning. With enough with the chewing on the bone. You want? Let's do the next one. You play this one, okay? You know what? You do. You do you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play bound. Okay. I think bounds would be a good one to try next. Okay. Bound to bone. No, Marty. What can I say about Bound besides it blew me away with its beauty? Where Wipeout gave me the rush of going fast in the vehicle, Bound transported me to someone's dream. Again, watching the footage does not do this game justice. I thought a VR addition to Bound was going to be tacked on and gimmicky, but it's the way this game should be played. In the story you play as a woman sitting on a beach remembering her childhood. She looks at an old drawing book that has pictures of a magical world. You, the player, gets transported there where you play as a princess that has been tasked by your mother, the queen, to rid the world of an invading monster. There's more to it than that and it ties into a lot of serious themes of family dysfunction, divorce, and child abandonment, but I really think you should play it for yourself and not let me spoil it for you. The music and sound effects are wonderful in Bound. Sounds of the wind blowing and the particles swirling around, huge structures moving complemented by this music that kind of mixes piano and 80s synthesizer. This is going to sound stupid, but I had an overhead fan blowing in my room while playing, making me feel like I was really in the game when I heard the wind blow. I cannot get how well they animated the main character. All of your movements are of a ballet dancer. A lot of times when you play a game with this level of animation, there seems to be some type of input lag, like you have to wait until the animation has completed before being able to do another input, but that's not the case here. The character's movement is precise and immediate. Bound is almost like a hybrid between a platformer and a walking sim. There are a lot of jumps to make, but this is a game where you cannot die. If you fall, you immediately go back to where you just were. Sometimes I wish it was more like a traditional game with rewards and punishments for your skill of navigating the character, but it works like it is. Be warned that Bound probably was the worst in terms of potentially getting motion sickness if you set the VR camera settings to smooth. I ended up using the smooth camera option since it seemed to give me the best experience, but some sequences like riding on ribbons while painting the camera were really rough on my stomach the first couple of times. I don't think that Bound is for everyone, but if you are a fan of games like Journey or Flower for the PlayStation 3, then this might be right up your alley. Marty, you should really give that one a try. That was good. Marty? Marty, you're sleeping? Okay, well, I guess I'll do, guess I'll do the last one. Um, you're seriously sleeping. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do Farpoint, and you, you, just, you just sleep away. Farpoint was probably the most surprising out of all the games I played in VR. Everything I read about the game said it was going to be boring and generic. All you do is fight bugs in the desert for a few hours and then you just call it a day. Well, you do fight bugs in the desert, but you also fight robots and aliens. Yes, this game is only set in a desert environment, but they do a great job at making you feel part of the world. The terrain and time of day changes throughout the story prevented it from getting boring in its 4-5 to five hour playthrough. It's definitely not the library from Halo, don't worry. In the game, you play as a pilot of a space station that gets sucked into a wormhole and then crashes on this foreign planet on the other side. The story from there plays out with you in search of your crew through the rocky terrain, finding video logs of their experience after the initial crash. I am a sucker for sci-fi stories that involve wormholes, time dilation, and really any type of interstellar-esque story, so I thought Farpoint was great in this regard. Again, in other reviews I read, people said the story seemed tacked on, but it didn't feel that way for me. I would get excited when the next video log was about to play. I was generally invested in the outcome of the two crew members that you were attempting to find. Farpoint's music and sound effects are pretty good overall. Gun and explosion effects sound good, although I did lower the voice and music levels to give the guns a little bit more volume. The enemies sound good as well. I really like the sound of the robots midway through the game. 
They give out these groaning noises that sounds like metal bending and creaking under pressure. During many sections of the gameplay, there won't be any music, just sound effects, which gives you this feeling of loneliness and isolation. Just the sound of your footsteps and the wind blowing sand through the canyons of the alien planet. The music tends to come in during large fight and story sequences. It can range from subtle eerie tones to more suspenseful orchestral pieces with heavy violin and cello sections. It has a very Hans Zimmer interstellar feel. Graphics are pretty good. Now there's not a lot of demanding environments, but what it does, it does well. Some of the sections set at night with fires scattered throughout from the different parts of the station crashing on the planet look good, as well as the backgrounds that change as you travel further towards the survivors. Character models of the enemies and the other survivors look okay. Nothing particularly great about them, but nothing bad either. My only complaint with the game would be the resolution. Farpoint encourages you to fire at enemies long distance using the gun sights towards the later half of the game, and things can get really blurry due to the resolution. I am playing this on the PS4 Pro, which supposedly helps the internal rendering resolution, but I still wish it was a little bit better. The gameplay in Farpoint is the most basic of first-person shooters. There are a handful of guns that become available to you as you progress through the story, each with their own primary and secondary fire. There are also about seven to eight enemy types, four of those being different types of bugs. Each of the enemies have their own strategy for defeating them. For instance, there's a crab-like creature that uses its legs as a shield. You can play the waiting game for it to go out of shield mode, or you can run and shoot it between the legs, forcing it to reveal its vulnerable spots. Getting too close can be dangerous, though, since its main attack is a stampede slash charge attack. I wish there would have been more enemy types, but I never got bored fighting any of them. I think if the game had been any longer, boredom probably would have set in. I really like the way you control the character. I was using a DualShock controller and not an AIM controller, so my experience may be different than others, but the premise is the same. The game tracks the controller so it acts as your gun. Bringing the controller up to your face allows you to look down the sight. It works really well and I never had any issue with the tracking. The analog sticks allow you to move and turn, while your head allows you to freely look. Later firefights with alien soldiers created a really fun and unique experience because you could peek around corners with just your head or stick your gun out in blind fire like you would in a third person cover base shooter. These abilities make the combat different from your normal first person shooter. You're not strafing out from behind cover with your whole body, firing, and then strafing back. You move and react closer to how you would in real life. On a side note, Farpoint does have online multiplayer, both co-op and deathmatch, but I don't have any friends with PSVR, so I didn't get a chance to try this mode. If Farpoint was not VR and had rail controls, I would say this was a short, generic shooter, like I mentioned other reviewers said. The way in which first-person shooters change in VR is able to make what would normally be boring fun and engaging. I had a lot of fun with Farpoint and I would definitely recommend it. I was a pretty big cynic when it came to VR. I was assuming that all the games were going to be gimmicky. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of PSVR games that are just that. Just looking at the available games on the PSN, some of them just scream garbage. But the games that I have experienced so far have really sold me. I get this feeling of childhood excitement putting on the headset. It's something I rarely get nowadays with games feeling more and more the same with just prettier graphics and higher resolutions. I really hope VR doesn't die. It just needs a Mario, Halo, or some type of killer game to sell the idea. I think they should start converting more existing games to VR. I mean, still make games specifically for it, but also release more games like Resident Evil 7, where it was initially made for playing on a standard TV and then converted to VR. Can you imagine GTA 5 in VR? They would just have to rename it to the Oasis at that point. If you haven't experienced VR yet, then you should give PSVR a try. It's really fun and I think you're going to enjoy it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe below. This was our first video and Marty and I had a lot of fun making it. Thank you so much.